This is part of one of 11 videos on heat and the kinetic theory of gases. Details are available from the physics website. The purpose of this video is to derive an equation relating the macro properties of a gas to the micro properties. In the first instance, imagine a single molecule rebounding backwards and forwards inside a box. If we freeze this molecule just a few moments before it hits the right-hand face of the box, the momentum of the molecule will be mv, where m is its mass and v its velocity. If it rebounds elastically from the end of the box, then its momentum will be mv, but in the opposite direction. Remembering that momentum is a vector quantity, the change in momentum is then mv minus minus mv, which is 2mv. Remember that we're making the assumption that the collision is perfectly elastic. The next step is to calculate the force on the shaded green face. To do that, we need to know the dimensions of the box. So we give it length L, width W and height H. The molecule will rebound from one end of the box, along to the other, rebound there and then back again. In this time, it covers a distance of 2L. Since it has a velocity v, the time taken, distance divided by speed, is 2L divided by v. Here again we're making an assumption. The distance that the atom or molecule will actually be travelling is slightly less than the full length of the box due to its own size. So we're making the assumption that the diameter or size of the atom or molecule is insignificant. Neither are we making any allowance for the time of the collision we're assuming that that time is absolutely negligible. It is important for most examination boards that you make a note of these assumptions we're making. When the particle hits the side of the box, there is a force on the face due to the reversal of the momentum of the particle. Derived from Newton's laws, the average force on the face is equal to the rate of change of momentum, that is the change of momentum divided by the time taken. We've seen that the change of momentum is 2mv. The time taken is that for the molecule or atom to travel up the box and down again. We have already calculated that, and the time is 2l over v, which cancels and resolves to mv squared over l. The average pressure on the face is the force divided by the area. That is the force mv squared over l, all divided by W times H, the area of the face. This gives mv squared divided by LWH, but L times W times H is the volume of the box. So we replace that with capital V for volume. Now, of course, we expect that there are a large number of molecules in the box, all going backwards and forwards. We don't know what that number is, so we'll give it simply the symbol capital N. So the force on one face due to N molecules bouncing backwards and forwards will be N mv squared over v. And of course the molecules won't just be going sideways, they'll be going up and down and backwards and forwards. Because there are three possible directions in which they can travel, the average force therefore is divided by three. In making this general assumption that the molecules have a similar effect in every direction, we are particularly assuming that there are a very large number of molecules and that their motion is entirely random. This proof relies upon the molecules moving at uniform speeds and in straight lines, even when there are large numbers. Consequently, we're assuming that there are no forces between the molecules to disturb that. We have moved on to the point where we have a general expression for the motion of gas in this box. It is that the pressure is equal to the number of particles times the mass of 1 multiplied by the velocity squared divided by 3 times the volume of the box. But of course we must recognise that within this box and a large number of molecules, the collisions between molecules will mean that their speeds are not all the same. We cannot simply use an expression for average velocity, because velocity is a vector. 
And for every molecule moving up, there'll be one moving down. For every one moving sideways, there'll be one moving in the opposite direction, and so on. The average velocity would be zero. It would make absolutely no sense to substitute a value of zero in this equation. So we turn to the concept of... See the website for details of more videos in this series.